call this meeting to order. We ask Dr. Diggin to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> Call the roll, please. Mr. Jester. Here. Ms. Ronio. Ms. John. Here. Mr. Sheriff. Here. Dr. Schutz. Colonel Waters. We have no special guests this evening. Uh, item 5, Architects Report. And no Architects Report either. Departmental Report. And no Departmental Report. Uh, report of the Superintendent. We under the report of the superintendent, we have item A, it's consideration and action to approve or not to approve a resolution calling for the Oklahoma legislature to create a special funding situation for pension liability in the state of Oklahoma. Second. Call roll, please. Ms. John. Yes. Mr. Sharon. Yes. Mr. Jester. Yes. Okay, items. B and C, and I'll go, Mr. Smith will address them together. Will be um, item B is information item, State Department of Education certified annual dropout report, and item C is the district ACE remediation report. And Mr. Smith, our director of uh, executive director of secondary education, will be presenting that report to us. Good evening. The dropout report you'll see in front of you um, for each one of the, the seven secondary schools. Um, I've tried to compile a list because I think it's important to kind of compare to uh, how we've done in past years. Um, you'll see that uh, the, the high schools, Eisenhower High School is uh, the first one. Their dropout uh, rate is uh, right at 3%, 2.99%. Um, their number of dropouts um, kind of uh, total has remained. They had 39 last year. They had 39 this year. Uh, of course, they had more students last year, so the percentage uh, has gone up from that. Uh, if you look at the second page, um, Lawton High's uh, report, they had 57 dropouts last year, which is 3.10%. Um, on that, the 2011-12 the, uh, dropout rate was at 35, and so they've increased a little bit. And, and this, after I get through going over to all the high schools, I could kind of explain a little bit about what affects our dropout rates and why they vary from year to year. And then MacArthur's dropout rate uh, for 2012-13 was 5, and that's 0.45%. Uh, Their 2011-12 dropout rate was, was um, 11, and that was a little over 1% for that. You'll notice that the high schools, uh, we worked very hard over the last several years to work on our dropout rate from 2008-09, um, when you can see all the schools uh, dropout rates uh, were higher by almost a, a percentage point and some two and three percentage points. We did, um, at the time of 2005-06, uh, um, institute a program for graduation coaches. And we've worked with uh, those students that were at risk. Um, we've identified students that are at risk of those that are failing more than one class. We, of course, look at their attendance. If they're not in school, we try to identify those. And kids that are not involved uh, in school in any athletic or club organization, those are the kids that you know we highlight and try to uh, identify. Graduation coaches, that was their sole responsibility, was to, to find out where these kids were, what they were doing in their classes, get them involved in school. And they did an excellent job of that. And we, we of course, um, did staff development with these graduation coaches who in turn did staff development with our uh, counselors and administrators and our teachers. And uh, that, is, that has helped tremendously over the last five years of, of uh, lowering our dropout rate. Um, dropout rates also affected by uh, how many kids uh, are homeless, how many kids uh, drop out of school to take the GED. We don't get to count those kids as uh, graduates, even though they've worked towards uh, uh, getting their GED. They still count as uh, um, dropouts against our high schools. And so uh, we try to identify, you know, kids that instead of going to GED or instead of being a dropout to offer them other programs like Gateway, offer them SCORE uh, through the Great Tanes uh, Technology Center, which has been very helpful, and uh, uh, Job Corps. Job Corps has been um, a place that we've uh, had kids that, you know, they can earn a salary out there as well as, as attend school and get a, a um, 
a job skill doing that. And so those three areas, along with the, um, the staff development, the knowledge that we gain from our graduation coaches and the, and the staff development that we've given our staff has helped lower our uh, dropout rate over the last uh, five years. The middle schools, for the most part, usually don't have very many dropouts. Uh, kids uh, usually don't drop out that young. And, you know, it's usually after uh, they get into to high school. Occasionally we do get some kids in middle school that will be reported on the dropout list. Most of the time those kids, um, somehow we've lost track of them. It's not that they're not in school. Being a military town, sometimes, um, you know, they get uh, overseas and we can't keep up with where they're at and we have to count them as a dropout if we don't get a uh, school, a receiving school, to request their grades. So the middle school dropout rates, for the most part, um, are, are usually very low and usually zero for the most part on that. Um, any questions about the dropout rates? Uh, Mr. Smith, I, I noticed that uh, uh, last year's dropout rates at both Eisenhower and Watton High were dramatically lower. Mm -hmm. uh, is there an explanation for that? Or well, th th this year, Lawton High um, had a, a 2012-13, they had a large number of, of kids homeless that were counted as homeless kids. And, and the problem that we have with that is that usually those kids are in and out of our system. They usually don't stay the entire school year. And it's the next thing is they're off in a car and they're headed to Dallas or they're headed to Oklahoma City and we don't hear from them or they don't enroll back in school for two or three months. And uh, uh, that's one of the, the things that affects that also. It does go in cycles a little bit from, mm -hmm. from years to year. But for the most part, you can see kind of a, a gradual trend downward uh, from what we had in 2008-09 um, to, to, you know, 2011-12. And, and the, the drag, dropout rate's a little bit higher this year. But we're working hard on bringing those down. One of the things I'll tell you, a lot of times it's just bookkeeping like I said in middle school a lot of times it's bookkeeping that causes us to have a, a dropout our, our registrars at our high schools our attendance uh, principals uh, grade principals are working hard to make sure that we're following up with where these kids are going on that and uh, we're doing a better job of that are we where we want to be no I know the uh, Dr. Deegan and I and Dr. Polk have talked about uh, we want uh, a zero dropout rate for all our schools. We want a 100% graduation rate, and we're not going to be satisfied until we get to that, that point. It, it would be important to note that Lawton High is the only school that has a principal, a system principal that's dedicated to attendance. Of course, um, they work hard on their attendance, and they have a lot of kids. The other two high schools don't have an attendance um, officer, attendance principal that just keeps up with attendance. It turns into um, the problem for the grade principal to keep up with attendance as well as discipline as well as uh, the other issues that the system principals have to keep up with on that. So there are things that we'd like to see improved. There are um, programs that we're looking at, uh, you know, trying to guide our kids that maybe don't feel like they can stay in a regular high school setting. And um, our registrars are working hard on keeping up with where our kids, tracking our kids and where they're going and we can cut down on, I mean, use those three things, uh, our, our staff, our programs, and our, our registrars, our tracking of, of uh, where these kids go to help improve our dropout rate. And, and uh, I would be very surprised if, if we were anywhere close to um, that many dropouts at Lawton High next year. Um, you know, 57 uh, is quite a few. Of course, you know, if you look back just to 2010-11, you know, they had 59. And last year they did really well, only having 35 uh, on that. And, and they are working, Ms. Manning, I promise you, is working that. And Ms. Uh, Burgundy is their, their attendance principal at Lawton High, and she's working hard on, on tracking those kids, keeping up with where they're at, why they're not in school, that kind of thing. The kids that aren't, tr um, aren't the ones that have moved out of our district, how, how does that work, I mean, for that child? Um, are, are they truant for so long and then they're considered uh, put in alternative placement? How does that work? You're talking about if a student doesn't show up to school for several weeks, what's the process right. that you go through? How does he become a dropout? At what point do you count him as a dropout or, or what steps do we take to prevent that? Or okay, Usually our um, attendance officers will, and grade principal, Ms. Burgamy at Lawton High and then the grade principals at the other three high schools, will make contact with the 
the uh, student and the parent, have them come in, uh, especially if uh, per nine weeks, if they miss more than five days per nine weeks, we try to call them in and we give them uh, um, an attendance warning where we talk to them about um, being in school, why aren't you in school, if, it, if you've been sick or illness, uh, please bring us a, a waiver showing us where you were. And uh, they sign a, a, a attendance a warning with the principal, the student, and the parent. And that gets turned into Arthur Walker's student services office. And after that, two or three more absences, usually we will follow up again. And at this time, they can be sent to Arthur Walker um, for him to talk to them and make them sign a contract saying that they're going to be in school and there is a possibility that they can be turned over to the DA's office um, for delinquent child uh, on that. The problem that we get into at that point is that, um, you know, with the mobility of our kids at some point, it's hard to get them back after they get that second warning and they get to see Mr. Walker. A lot of times, you know, they get concerned about, you know, what am I going to do? If the DA is going to come and get me. Very seldom do we have to get to that point to where the DA gets involved because we will work with you. We want you in school. Uh, we want you every day coming to school that you can. We will work. Bring us, you know, a doctor's note. Bring us a uh, court. Uh, if there's a death in the family, we waive all those attendants and we can give you a grade as long as you uh, don't miss more than 10 days and, and we can waive any other absences. And so I think the main thing that we work on is, is making them have hope. Yeah, you know, it's hard to have hope if you've had 12 absences and the state law says that we can't give you a grade after 10 unless you can get some of those days waived uh, at that point. Um, but it will, usually it turns down to the end of the year. The fourth quarter, um, we, we try to get kids re-entered back in school. We try to make sure that they're there. A lot of times, like I said, it's just losing track of them. You know, after, if we lose contact with them, we haven't been able to contact them for a quarter, we put them down as a dropout. We'll have the graduation coaches. No, we don't. We don't and have any graduation. Is that a program we got rid of this last year? It was three years ago, actually. Three years ago. Yes, it was okay. three years ago that we got rid of that program. And it was, an, and we, Dr. Deegan and, and Dr. Polk and I talked about that just this week. It was a great program. We had some people that were very inspired uh, about following, chasing kids down. When I, uh, when I was the principal of the high school, um, our graduation coach would work until 8 o'clock at night. They would, they would go to their work. If they were, kids were working at McDonald's, they'd say, hey, you weren't in school today. Where are you at? They would go hunt them down. And, and that's kind of the what we need to do for these kids. They need to know somebody cares, somebody's following up, somebody's going to try to help you, and, and don't lose hope. That's the main thing, is that we give them hope that there is a chance. One of the things I say that uh, has helped our, our graduation rate and will help our drop, and has helped our dropout rate is our uh, credit recovery program. You know, kids used to have to go to summer school, and if you got behind three or four credits, you'll find that most kids start considering dropout. Uh, as it, they start thinking, well, I can't catch up. I won't ever graduate with my class. Our credit repro recovery program at each one of the high schools allows the students to make up a half credit each semester after school hours. And so they can get caught up there. They can make a credit up over the summer. So if you fall behind uh, two credits, you can make those up the same year and get caught up, or you can make them up the next year. You, it, it's a way of giving them hope. I think we, we, if they tended a lot in public school, class and failed it, we let them take credit recovery for free. And so there's, there's no reason outside of providing the time, getting here, staying after school, that we can't get you caught up on, on your credit recovery. And Gateway does a great job too. Gateway, can, since they're an alternative school, they can offer one more credit than the high schools can per year. And they've got a great credit recovery program too. Uh, um, they take kids that have been out of school um, maybe for uh, a year, maybe they're 20 years old and they were missing two credits and they didn't finish them up. We enroll them in, in Gateway, let them go to credit recovery, and they sometimes can get caught up in a semester if they're two credits behind. If they come and work three or four hours a day um, with Miss Barker at Gateway, we can get them caught up really quick and get them a diploma by December on that. So that's, those are areas that we've worked on real hard the last couple of years. It's helped our graduation rate. It's helped give kids hope that are considering dropping out is that, hey, I won't have to go to summer school. I won't be a, a, a graduate uh, two years behind my class. And, and those things that uh, kids really need, they need hope that, that they can do it. Yeah. Even though you say that we don't uh, try and we don't get credit for them, do you have any kind of numbers of when they do? I mean, 
they go through either score or they get their GED. Do we know a number on that of how many actually go through another process and get mm -hmm. some kind we of do, We do have, of course, keep up with our gateway numbers because that's a lot in public school programs. Score, we, we, they will tell you that, and I'm guessing off the top of my head now, but um, you know, 75, 80 percent of the kids at score are, are a lot in public school kids. Um, they were approaching 90 kids in the program um, last year. May have more than that now uh, on that, and we can tell what high school they came from, that they're a lot in public schools, when, they, when their year of graduation is, those type of things. The, the GED numbers, I'm sure we have. I haven't seen them, but I'm sure that uh, the adult ed program can tell us how many uh, GEDs uh, were given out uh, last year. I personally haven't seen that number, but um, we can keep it up. Future, and we have that as like an asterisk that I know it's not counted, but it kind of shows that you know there is a system in place that even though we couldn't facilitate that, that at least they got their GED or score program. And then, then it kind of gives us a kind of gives you a little bit, a little bit of encouragement with the right. numbers as well. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, on that, if they graduate from school or they graduate from Gateway, we get of course we get to count them as graduates for the high school that they attended or the, that they live in. We do get to count those numbers as part okay, of Okay, so that's already in there. Okay. It, it's the GED numbers, sometimes the Job Corps numbers that we don't get right away that we have to go hunt up to find on that. I get you. Thanks. Okay. The second uh, part is the um, ACE remediation report uh, for fiscal year 2011-12. This is how many kids um, that we've remediated because they failed a uh, state mandated test. You can see on the, the second page, item one is identify the number of students who participated in remediation. And um, it shows you for math, um, for eighth grade reading, ninth grade math, ninth grade reading, algebra one, algebra two, biology one, English two, English three, and geometry and US history. I will tell you that uh, all our numbers in remediation are down this year from last year, except science, biology numbers are up. Last year we had 289 students that uh, qualified for remediation in 2011-12, 2012-13 we had 388. One of the reasons is, is they made the test harder. And so the kids were getting judged by a different uh, test on that, or a different cut score, I should say, on that. So. That's the reason for the big jump in, um, in, in science and biology on that part. But uh, all our numbers are down in remediation. I will tell you this much is that we usually receive our remediation money by the 1st of October. Diane Brandsetter told me we got it today. And so we're five weeks behind on remediation this year compared to last year because of the state. And the problem that we were told is that they were having trouble with the test scores, making sure that finalizing the test scores, and they base the money that you get on the test scores and how many kids were um, didn't uh, score proficient or higher. And so they finalized those finally Friday of last week, and we finally got the money today to do that. And so I'm going to get that out this week to our um, principals. They've been asking me every day for the past month Where's our ACE money? Where's our ACE money at? When are we going to start remediation? The other bad part of this is, is that these high school kids that are missing the EOI test, especially seniors, we want to give them every opportunity to take every test we can and get remediated as much as we can. Well, they're going to take a test in December, okay? And so we roughly have three and a half weeks to remediate these kids where we normally have eight weeks to remediate these kids. And uh, we're going to get on that hard. We're going to try to make sure that every kid has the opportunity uh, to pass the EOI test. Um, seniors especially, they'll have another chance in April. And if they don't pass in April, then we can't issue them a diploma in May. Now, they'll have another opportunity in August to take a test. But uh, you will find that it has really put us behind kind of the eight ball of us not getting our ACE funding in, in an appropriate manner this year uh, on that. But it, it does list uh, on page one there all the numbers of students who participated. It also um, lists those parents who opted their kids out of remediation and those that moved out of the district. It tells a little bit uh, of what um, types of remediation that we use. We use all different types of remediation uh, from a classroom teacher to 
our Odyssey Rare programs. We have other programs, uh, Study Island, USA Test Prep, and, and a few more that uh, um, I can't remember off the top of my head. But we use IBI programs, programs that use computers to, to help these kids today. That's been real successful. Um, we use uh, tutoring before school and after school at a lot of our, our schools. We used to have a Saturday math school. Uh, of course, we're not uh, being able to fund that this year uh, that we've used in the past also to help our math scores, um, and that's helped also. On the uh, third page, it lists the primary mode of instruction and strategies and interventions that are listed there for each grade level. You know, teacher created curriculum, curriculum purchased. You'll see that computer aided uh, instruction is one of the ones that we use, and uh, and because it, it only let us list one, but we use others. We use teacher created curriculum, we use purchase curriculum, but it, it said that I could we could only report one on this report, and so the one that we use most often with the most kids is our uh, computer programs um, to help with remediation, but we do use others. And that I just couldn't list them on this report because we get on this one. We do have remediation fall, spring, and summer. And like I said, we're down, we're behind on our fall remediation uh, right now. Uh, there's a little narrative on number six about uh, uh, how we're doing in uh, ACE remediation and uh, as a district, how we feel. Item seven, it, uh, it lists. Uh, Identify the progress assessments used to how do we monitor them? Of course, uh, you know a benchmark test that we give is one of the main ways that we mark how our kids are doing because we give a benchmark each quarter. Uh, we also have a program uh, each one of our programs like Odyssey Wear, Study Island, USA Test Prep will give us an indication of a score every time a kid is on there remediating. There will be a test at the end of their remediation for that day or that subject area or, or that chapter. And uh, it will tell us how them how they're doing. If they're not, they didn't get the concept. We'll make them go back on the computer and redo that particular section of the uh, um, curriculum that they didn't score well on. So that's very helpful in, in identifying that. And of course, teacher observations, um, how the teachers can tell how the students are doing and if they're struggling on that. And some kids, we have to have they have to have a teacher. I mean, the majority of them can use the computer programs with the teacher helping them when needed. But we do have kids that, uh, you know, they, they need the teacher right there in front of them, helping them each and every subject on that. And then the last page, um, well, it may not be the last page. Page um, four, it, um, number eight, it lists the number of students who scored proficient or advanced. Uh, you can see we had 40 that scored uh, advanced. That's up from 18 in 2011-12. We only had 18 kids that scored that. We had 577 who scored proficient. We only had 500 in 2011-12. Number of students who did not score proficient is 299. In 2011-12, we had 473. And so that number has dropped a great deal. And um, in the number of students who have not taken the test yet, that's pretty much remained the same. It's uh, uh, 336 for 2012-13. For 2011-12, it was 324. But you can see, and hopefully this will continue a drop in remediation as we find out um, where the kids are, software programs, we can remediate them before the test, before they flunk it the first time. And, and that helps the uh, school with their scores, with the State Department, helps the teachers um, you know, identify every teacher wants their kids to pass the first time. They, they don't want them to have to go through remediation. And our remediation numbers have dropped uh, from last year in, in every subject but biology uh, on that. And our s scores of advanced and proficient have increased. So we're getting better at this. And um, it will continue, hopefully, to where we have very few kids needing remediation, hopefully, in the end on that part. Uh, the money that's spent is on the last page, page five. It tells you in what areas that we spend uh, our money uh, in. We uh, received roughly $170,000 this year, if I can remember. I thought I printed it off here, but um, 
for today. Uh, Ms. Brandsetter sent me the amount, $170,000. Last year, I believe we received $156,000. So they did increase our, our ACE remediation money a little bit this year. The, the only bad part is, is they didn't get it to us in time uh, on that. But that's how, that's how our money is spent um, for the district. And we spend a large portion of it on our, our software programs. So um, if I'm understanding you correctly, the they're placed in remediation if they don't score well on their CRTs, correct? Say that again. They don't, if they don't score well enough on their CRTs, then they're put into remediation. remediation. Yes. Okay. Yes. And do we factor in their grades? Because, you know, some kids just aren't good test takers. No, they have to score a proficient score on the CRTs or we're going to try to remediate them unless the parents sign them out. Okay. So that, and that's, that's the high stakes of tests is that some kids can be just as intelligent, can be just as successful in business life, whatever they choose for their career. They're just not good test takers. But we've chosen in Oklahoma to put high stakes tests out there to test in a lot more subjects than we need to test in. And it puts our teachers, our, our kids at, at a very high stress level. And uh, um, there's a lot more to school than just taking a test, I promise you on that. Is this something that's mandated by the legislature? It is. Okay. It is. On that. Federal government only requires us to test math, reading, and, and science. And we test seven other subjects. Amen. Any other questions? Good. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. You bet. Okay, item eight is a uh, consent agenda. Do we have any items that need to be removed? None for me. I do not, sir. Move for approval. I'll second that. Call roll, please. Mr. Sharon? Yes. Ms. John? Yes. Mr. Jester? Yes. Item nine is a proposed executive session. Call roll, please. Ms. John? Yes. Mr. Sharon? Yes. Mr. Jester? Yes. 